Technique 49. Normalize error. Here's another winter classic. I asked my old man if I could go ice skating on the lake. He told me, wait till it gets warmer. <laughs> error, followed by correction and instruction, is the fundamental process of schooling. You get it wrong, and then you get it right. Getting it wrong, and then getting it right, is one of the fundamental processes for schooling. Respond to both parts of this sequence, the wrong and the right, as completely normal. If getting it wrong and then getting it right is normal, teachers should normalize error and respond to both parts of that sequence as if they were totally and completely normal. After all, they are. Here's how we deal with wrong answers. Don't chasten and don't excuse. Avoid chastening wrong answers. For example, no, we've already talked about this. You have to flip the sign, Ruben. And do not make excuses for students who get it wrong. Oh, that's okay, Charlie. That was a really hard one. In fact, if wrong answers are truly a normal and healthy part of the learning process, they don't need much narration at all. It's better, in fact, to avoid spending a lot of time talking about wrongness and get down to the work of fixing it as quickly as possible. Although many teachers feel obligated to name every answer as right or wrong, spending time making that judgment is usually a step you can skip entirely before getting to work. When and if you do name an answer as wrong, do so quickly and simply. You might say something like, not quite, and keep moving. Again, since getting it wrong is normal, you don't have to feel badly about it. In fact, if all students are getting all questions right, the work you're giving them isn't hard enough. Here's how we deal with right answers. Don't flatter and don't fuss. Praising right answers can have one of two perverse effects on students. If you make too much fuss, you suggest to students that you're surprised that they got the right answer. And as a variety of social science research has recently documented, praising students for being smart perversely incents them not to take risks. Apparently doing so causes students to worry about no longer looking smart if they get things wrong. In contrast, we want to praise students for working hard, which incents them to take risks and take on challenges. So in most cases, when a student gets an answer correct, acknowledge that the student has done the work correctly or has worked hard, then move on. You might say, that's right, Brian, nice work. Show your students that you expect both right and wrong to happen by not making too big a deal of either. Of course, there will be times when you want to sprinkle in stronger praise. Just do so carefully so that such praise isn't diluted by overuse. By not making a big deal out of wrong or right answers, teachers show that it's a normal part of school to get it wrong, and then get it right. Avoid chastising students or spending much time on wrong answers. Move on quickly and effectively.